And um, I'm just asking that God would speak to your heart. God bless you. So I think I might just cover the fact that you were created to be great. And because we're created to be great, and because we're created and we have dominion, we have to speak what God has spoken in our hearts and live out what God has spoken in our heart through his word. Amen. Amen. And that's basically what we're going to cover. I wanted to get into different areas, but we're just going to cover that over the next um, couple weeks. So we're looking at the seven signs of dominion. So in this scripture it says, and God said. Originally when I read it, I went all the way to dominion and I skipped over the first portion. But the whole fact that dominion starts from the fact that God speaks. The reason why we have authority in our life, why we have authority on this thing called dominion in this earth, is because God said so. As a matter of fact, the reason why we have an earth is because God spoke it into being. Nothing was until God began to speak. And the thing that happens because speaking is so central to creativity that even in our own lives, we can't really create a lot of things unless we first speak it into being. People nowadays say that the number one thing you should do if you have a goal or you have a desire is to write it down. But the purpose of the writing of it down isn't just to have it on paper. It's because when your body begins to move, when your mind begins to move, when you begin to see the words, you'll speak it through your mouth. But even if you don't speak it through your mouth, you begin to speak it into your life. Because every time you write something down, every time you concentrate on something, every time you think about something, you give it a life. So when God said, let there be light, light came because God said it. And the scripture goes on and says, and God said, let us make man. So because God said it, it came into effect. It says, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So not only did God create us, like he created the birds, and he created the fishes, and he created um, the, the bugs, and he created the ants, or whatever, whatever, was created, whatever else is created. Not only did God create everything, but when God created us, he differentiated us from everything by saying that we're made in his image and in his likeness. And one of, the, one of the main attributes of the creative God is that the creative God speaks. So if God speaks and he's made us in his image and in his likeness, then what do we do? We speak. So one of the keys to our dominion, we're going to be covering this in more detail, but one of the keys to our dominion is the ability to speak things that are not into becoming, into fruition, into becoming soul. So, when we're talking about this idea of dominion, God says, before I give you dominion, I'm gonna make you in my image, and I'm gonna make you in my likeness. And after I make you in my image and my likeness, then the scripture says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So my dominion is based upon the fact that God spoke my dominion into being. If God didn't say it, we wouldn't have it. But since God said it, we have it. The problem that we have in this world is because Adam sinned against God, man appeared to have lost this thing called dominion. But when you read the scripture closely, the scripture says that man is made in the image and likeness of God. And even after man sins, we still have the image of God within us. Even after man sins, we still have an ability to dominate or to control things in our life. Because you don't have to be saved to have authority in your life. You don't have to be saved to start a company and to, to, to run it well. You don't have to be saved. So God intrinsically wired every human being to have this thing that's called dominion. Um, when we're looking at the definition of dominion, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, um, the word that's used for dominion, it's a Hebrew word that's called rada. I spoke about it last week a little bit, but rada, rada means to have dominion, to have rule, to dominate, and to control. It literally means to tread or trample something under your foot. So if you recall, I believe it's in Genesis chapter 3, when God is giving the judgment to man to woman and the serpent. He says to the woman and to the serpent, he says that the serpent is going to bruise the heel of the child or the seed of the woman, and the seed of the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent. 
Because the whole entire reason why men are born or men are created on this earth is to have dominion in this earth. But because of sin and because of, um, um, because of inequity and because of the fall, our understanding of dominion has become warped. Our image of God has become tainted. Our likeness to be like God, many of us, we have some attributes of God, but so many other attributes that we have are not of God. Lying, stealing, cheating, quitting, having negative kinds of thoughts, none of those things come from God. But even in the worst person, if you want to call a person worse, there is something that's good. And what God calls us into as it relates to dominion is to get into a place where we have a relationship with God, where God now takes control of the goodness that's in us. And we can do what God says to do, not unconsciously, but consciously, knowing what he's asked us to do. That we can take authority and dominion over things, and we take authority and dominion over things, we can do it in the name of God, because God can send us to have authority on the earth for our own means. He sent us to have authority on the earth for his means. We're Amen. stewards. Amen. Amen. So everything that we do that's good is for God. Amen. So if a man is doing something that's good that's not for God, then what he's doing ultimately isn't good. That's how come you can't be a good person and not serve God. Because anything that's good, and to its ultimate degree, to, to its climax, anything that's good is doing it with a conscious effort to serve God. So even with ourselves, if we're doing good things and we're not consciously doing it to serve God, then we have to reevaluate what we're doing and change some stuff and start doing it for the purpose of God. I heard somebody say that when you go up to a Christian, you ask them, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, who are you? Most Christians, they talk about their family, or they talk about their workplace, or they talk about the community that they're born in, or they talk about where they come from. But by right, if we're really going to speak about who we are, and we identify ourselves to be with Christ, when a person asks you or I who we are, the first thing we should say is that we are stewards of God. We're sent into this world to make a difference for God. And he's given us dominion over things in this world to affect people's lives so that they would trust God and they would love God. And we, in turn, would trust God and love God. Because the reason why we live, who we are, is that we are people who have dominion because of God to do God's work. So when he comes back again, he can see the rest. Well, because what we call a good leader is a good leader in the secular world or even in the religious world is when a person gets everybody to feed into them their need. So what happens is that, is that person gets fulfilled and they accomplish the task that they want to accomplish and everybody will talk about how beautiful the building is and they'll talk about how great this person's career is and they'll talk about all the wonderful things that they've done. That's what most people aim for. But in the midst of all that, all the people die quietly and silently because none of their dreams are coming true. Nothing they desire is accomplished. They sacrificed everything to make her great, but their own children didn't get anything in life. And the children now look and say, you gave all your life to this company, and it didn't do nothing for you, it didn't do nothing for us, we don't want nothing to do with that company. And I bring that up because, when it comes to human beings, is that one of two things will happen. Either a leader will dominate people, like a thing to such a capacity that the people will get quiet, and just move along with whatever they say and die slowly or people or a person will rise up and say I don't want you to have dominion over me I want to have dominion over everybody and then when they rise up they will rebel and they will fight and they will create a problem and get people to follow them to get their will done I bring that up because that is how the world works you go to work some workplaces are like that you go to church some churches are like that um, you're involved in some volunteer things, some volunteer things, whatever, so like personally, it's not the church, is whenever you have a black history group, bring together people that are celebrating black history. And you'll see that many times the leader acts like a slave master. Because they want everybody to do everything their way, the way they want it done, and if you don't do it, get out. I bring it up because that will never work in a world where people have dominion. People who have authority, want to think. People who have authority crave to create things. People who have authority crave to see what they speak come to pass. People who have authority want to see God work in their life. And because of that, if you're a leader, you have to leave room for people to have a vision and for people to live. 
And if you're following somebody, you have to begin to encourage the leader to get a mindset to make some room so we can get some of our stuff done too. Because God didn't make one person a steward. He didn't make one person to dominate. He made all of us stewards to have dominion on this earth. And when we work together and we do what we're called to do and we discuss things and we, and we work in a community, we accomplish things. Every community is doing such great things in Toronto. Many of the immigrants, they come here and they're here for 20 years and they do such great things because they made up in their mind that I don't have to be in charge, you don't have to be in charge. We just have to get together and get something done. Because if, in order for us to survive in this country, if we keep bickering and fighting one another, we're going to be like that group over there who's been here all their life and are struggling. But if we can get together and get some stuff done, we can, we can, we can make a name for ourselves in our community. Amen? Amen? I'm going through all this because what I discovered, and it took me a long time because I couldn't get it, what I discovered is one of the greatest acts of dominion is not over fields, it's not over animals, it's not over companies. As a matter of fact, even ourselves, because at first I thought it was over, but even myself to some degree, I don't have dominion over me because God is the one that has dominion over me at the end of the day. But one thing that God showed me is that the greatest dominion that we have is over the air. We breathe it in, we breathe it out. If I was to name people who have authority over the air, over what we breathe in and we breathe out, some of the greatest names on the, uh, in the history of humankind, they had authority over the air. If I was to name some of the names, whether I agree with them or I don't agree with them, they have authority over the air. If I was to say Jay-Z, Jay-Z, what are you talking about? He has authority over the air. If I was to say Beyonce, what do you mean they have authority over the air? They sing. They rap. They manipulate sound that travels through the air. They don't produce nothing tangible. You can't touch it. You can't see it. But they produce something in the airways that when it gets through the air and it hits people's ears and it gets into their spirit, they'll pay money for it. People become famous for singing because singing is one of the greatest ways of manipulating and controlling what we call the air. And that's what we miss sometimes because we think it's the things that we own or the things that we dominate or the things that we control, that we can see, that have, that give us power. But what God showed me is that the greatest thing he's ever given us is ear, because we breathe it in and we breathe it out. But when you begin to speak into that ear, when you begin to sing into that ear, when you begin to take authority over the airwaves, you have authority in this world. I didn't come here to tell everybody to sing or to become rappers. I'm saying that when you speak, your speaking has more power than waking up and going to work every morning. Because if you don't speak it to yourself to get up and go, you'll never move. Sometimes people get discouraged because they're unemployed or they get discouraged because people don't like them or they get discouraged because they're impoverished or they get discouraged because, they, you know, um, because they've lost something in life. But as long as you can speak, and speaking moves even beyond moving your mouth, speaking is in the mind. As long as you can have a thought, you can have dominion. As long as you can have a thought, you can take some authority in this world. 